Hi everyone, let's talk about the vector cross product formula. The scenario is like this. Let's say we've got a vector a in three dimensions. So its components are a1, a2, a3. And let's say we have another vector b. So its components are b1, b2, b3. So these are position vectors emanating from the origin. And let's say that they're linearly independent. So they look something like this. A is shooting out like this, and B is shooting out like this. And we know that there's a plane generated by A and B. So let's say it's generated like this, and it spans out in all directions. What we want is to find a normal vector to the plane. So it's at a 90 degree angle with A, and it's at a 90 degree angle with B. And we know that such a vector exists because every plane has a normal vector. In fact, it has infinitely many normal vectors, but we don't yet have a explicit formula. And if you have seen the explicit formula, it's likely that you haven't seen the derivation before. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna derive it. We're gonna derive the formula for one normal vector and all other normal vectors are going to be its multiples. So let's set up the equation. Let's call this normal vector m. And we know that we want to solve m time m dot product a is equal to m dot product b is equal to zero because m is normal to a and m is also normal to b. And we're also going to use the simplifying fact that the norm of A, M, is equal to 1. So we're only going to be looking for the unit normal vectors. There's going to be two of them. One, one pointing this way and one pointing in the other direction, down. So let's write out what these equations are. And we're going to, we're going to use M, the vector, is the position vector m1, m2, m3. So the equations that we get are the following. First of all we get 0 equals to m1 a1 plus m2 a2 plus m3 a3. So that's the one where you take the dot product of m and a. And the other one is that 0 equals to m1b1 plus m2b2 plus m3b3. And we also know that m1 squared plus m2 squared plus m3 squared is equal to 1. But we're not going to need that until uh, a bit later. That's why I wrote it separately. So what we're going to do is that we're going to multiply the first equation, this one, by b1, by b2, and by b3. And the reason we're doing this is because we don't want to do um, division and isolation because we don't know what's zero and what's not zero. So we're just going to do multiplication and elimination. And over here, for this equation, we're going to multiply it by a1, by a2, and by a3. So let's see what we get. We get 0 equals to m1a1b1 plus m2a2b2 plus, sorry, b1 plus m3a3b1. Similarly, we get m1a1b2 plus m2a2b2 plus m3a3b2. And we get m1a1b3 plus m2a2b3 plus m3a3b3. And over here we get 0 equals to m1 
B1, A1 plus M2, B2, A1 plus M3, B3, A1. I'm just going to write down the original equation a couple times and then add in the rest. M1, B1, M1, B1, M2, B2, M2, B2, M3, B3, M3, B3, and we've got A2 throughout, and we've got A3 throughout. And let's put in the addition signs, and finally we're done. So we've got six equations, and what we're going to do is we're going to link up the equations in corresponding rows. We're going to set them equal to each other. And that allows us to do some partial factorization. For example, uh, for the first one, we get that M3 A3 B1 minus A1 B3 is equal to M2 A1 B2 minus A2 B1. For the second equation, we get M1 times a1 b2 minus a2 b1 is equal to m3 a2 b3 minus a3 b2 and the third equation is m2 a2 b3 minus a3 b2 is equal to m1 a3 b1 minus a1 b3 so we've got three equations and there's some repetition as you can see for example we have a3 b1 minus a1 b3 here and a3 b1 minus a1 b3 here we also have a1 b2 minus a2 b1 and a1 b2 minus a2 b1 here and finally we have a2 b3 minus a3 b2 and a2 b3 minus a3 b2 here so let's create some variables so that it's easier to see what the similarities are. We're going to let alpha naught, beta naught, and gamma naught be equal to A2, B3 minus A3, B2, A3, B1 minus A1, B3, and A1, B2 minus A2, B1. And that allows us to write the equations as in a different form. So we can write them instead as M3 beta naught is equal to M2 gamma naught. M1 gamma naught is equal to M3 alpha naught. And M2 alpha naught is equal to M1 beta naught. So it should be a bit clearer what's going on here. Now we're gonna think about alpha naught, beta naught, and gamma naught for a second because there's something very special about what's going on there. Alpha naught squared plus beta naught squared plus gamma naught squared. We, we want to show that at least one of them is non-zero so that we can divide by it. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to make progress. We want to show that this is non-zero. So if you, if you expand this out, this is equal to a2 b3 minus a3 b2 squared plus a3 b1 minus a1 b3 squared plus a1 b2 minus a2 b1 squared. And if you're familiar with Lagrange's identity, This is in fact equal to a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared times b1 squared plus b2 squared plus b3 squared minus a1 b1 plus a2 b2 plus a3 b3. So this should remind you of the Cauchy Schwarz inequality. What it tells us is that 
we have the norm of A squared times the norm of B squared minus the inner product. Oh, we have a we have a squared here. Minus the inner product of A and B squared. And this is going to be strictly greater than zero because A, B are linearly independent. So that tells us that alpha naught squared plus beta naught squared plus gamma naught gamma naught squared is not equal to zero. In fact, it's strictly greater than zero. And that's going to be useful to us right now because what we're going to do is that we're going to set alpha, th this magnitude here, we're going to set it equal to, let's say, C, okay? So what we, we're going to set is alpha equals to alpha naught over C, beta is equal to beta naught over C, and gamma is equal to gamma naught over C. So what that tells us is that alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared is equal to 1. So we have a normal vector here. Normal in term meaning it's a unit, sorry, it's a unit vector. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to go back to our original equations up here, these ones, and we're going to divide both sides by the magnitude a alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared square root. So actually there should have been a square root here. So we, we are actually dividing by the magnitude here. So what that what that then tells us is that we get the equations m3 beta is equal to m2 gamma, m1 gamma is equal to m3 alpha, and m2 alpha is equal to m1 beta. This is why I used the alpha naught, beta naught, and gamma naught earlier, because I, I knew that I was going to end up using the ordinary alpha, beta, and gamma here, where alpha, beta, gamma is a unit vector. And now we're going to use the fact that m1 squared plus m2 squared plus m3 squared is equal to 1. Because otherwise there'd be infinitely many normal vectors. So s since we know that this magnitude here is non-zero, we can suppose, for example, that alpha is not zero. We, the, the cases are symmetrical, so we're just going to assume for now that alpha is not zero. Then what that tells us is that 1 is equal to m1 squared plus m2 squared plus m3 squared. We're going to factor out the m1 squared, and we get 1 plus m2 over m1 squared plus m3 over m1 squared. And now we're going to use this equation here because m1 over m m3 over m1 is ga gamma over alpha. So we get gamma over alpha squared. And we're also going to use this equation here because m2 over m1 is beta over alpha squared. So we've got this equation, and that tells us that this is equal to m1 squared over alpha squared plus beta squared plus gamma squared over alpha squared, and that's just equal to m1 over alpha squared. So that's equal to 1 over here, see? So that means that m1 is equal to plus minus alpha. And now we can just do some casework. We can say that if m1 equals to alpha, uh, it's pretty easy to find out using our previous equations that m2 equals to beta and m3 equals to gamma. And if m1 equals to negative alpha, 
then m2 equals to negative beta and m3 equals to negative gamma. So what we find out is that the solutions are plus minus alpha, beta, gamma. And since those are multiples of each other, we can choose the cross product to be the normal vector. So we can say A cross B, this is a definition, is equal to alpha, beta, gamma. Well, actually, we'll choose alpha naught, beta naught, gamma naught. Otherwise, we'll be dividing by something that we don't exactly need. If you need the if you need the unit vector, just divide by its norm. And this is equal to a two b three minus a three b two, comma a three b one minus a one b three, comma a one b two minus a two b one. And the last thing I'll tell you is that there's an easy way of computing this. You don't have to memorize this formula. You can just deter take it as a determinant. I, J, K, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B, B3. And you can just use the rule of Saris. Look it up if you don't know what it is. Uh, the rule of Saris to expand it, where here I equals to 1, 0, 0 j equals to 0, 1, 0, and k equals to 0, 0, 1. So that's how you compute the cross product. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.